Hello, in this recording we're going to take a quick look at Sage 300 Intelligence Reporting and just look at some of the basic things that can be done with Sage 300 Intelligence. Now, out of the box, the product comes with a number of demonstration reports and reports that you can run. I would suggest that you start out perhaps by running some of these. Some of these reports are attached to the accounting data, whatever company you have open, you see I have the SAM Inc. 2017 on a SQL Server called SQL 2014 open. So if I run this dashboard analysis, this happens to have a parameter of fiscal year, and I already have this run, so we'll just take a look at this one. Uh, this is what we get when we run the dashboard analysis and there are some other things we can do this is in a financial reporter layout so we can customize it but let's take a, a quick look at what we have here we have just a sales dashboard current period we have net profit versus budget top expenses top customers top items year to date and these are all collected from the accounting system directly. We also have a dashboard analysis of AR. And we'll close this. And again, we have some very similar data. You can see how this is formatted. And you can run these reports right out of the box. I ran both of these for 2019. Uh, and you can run them for any year that's in your data. So let me close these up. I won't save any changes I might have made to them. And let's take a look at just extracting some data very quickly. I made a folder called My Reports. It has a couple of reports in it already, a copy of the dashboard analysis we were just looking at, and then a report I called Sales Orders Today. So I'm going to add a new report. A uh, standard report is what we'll generate here. We'll talk about a union report in a later demonstration. And what I want is sales information by a salesperson. One of the things I want to do here is to go over into the product itself and actually have an AR customer bargain mart up here. You can see my data is in 2019 and 2020 and notice I have some sales on 1012 we will need that later so these these data containers that are listed here have been pre-created you can see all of these that say Sage Backpack Auto Connect are going to be connected to whatever database I happen to be logged into right at that point. And so the data that I want is down here in this Sales Master AR 3-5 AR Sales Document Details. So what I want to do is I want to pull sales by salesperson. And when I say OK, I get a nice friendly list of column fields and I can connect, select what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the cost amount in functional currency. It won't matter because this document or this particular database only has one currency. Cost of goods sold in functional currency. And I want the customer name, the customer number, the document date, gross profit, And we'll pull the first three salesperson names. Let's say I don't ever have more than three. And then I'm going to pull selling price and functional currency. And these are the list checked off the list of columns that I want and say OK. Now in a simple report like this, I've got the report and I can just go ahead and run that right now. I won't get any filtering. I'll get all the data. If I had a large database with a lot of list, a lot of years of history, this might take a long time to run. Since I'm in sample data, I get a very simple list of invoices, and you can see 
the order that they're in may not be the best order. I've got salespeople and selling prices and gross profit. All right, so I look at this and I say, well, that's not exactly what I want. First place, I want the columns ordered differently. I like the customer number first and document date and such as that. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to say, no, don't save it. And I'm going to come over here to columns. And the first thing I want to do is I want the customer number first. So I'm just going to drag and drop and let go. And I want the customer name next. And then I want the document date. And I noticed selling price didn't have what I wanted in it. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add selling price. And then I can remove this. Another way to move things around here is to use the move up and move down buttons. And so I'm going to move these columns into the order I think I want them. And then I can come back over here and run it again. And all of that data will regenerate. And so here's my spreadsheet. It looks a little better this time. Selling price is per quantity, so if I don't create that kind of invoice in accounts receivable, I may not get uh, that particular field. Again, I don't want to save it. On this one now, let's set some parameters. I want to be able to actually choose documents by date. So I'm going to say document date greater than or equal to. And I'll just fill this in with today's date. And then we can say again, document number less than or equal to today's date. And as I'm looking at this, I notice I get document number, so I'm going to remove that. I want a date. And let's go down then, document date less than or equal to and again we'll fill it in with today's date and now I want to get the sales columns so I'm going to go back over here to the columns and I'm going to add there's a column on here called line sales amount and so I'm going to do both of these so we can see the difference. I've got excluding and including, and then I want to move this one up there and this one here. All right, and now we're ready to go back and run the report. And this time it asks for a date range. So I know my data is in 2019. Let's go from October 1st, 2019 to October. October 31, 2019. And this data is now extracted into Excel. And I can do anything I want to with the data from here. For example, I could go in and to data and subtotal when the salesperson name changes I can use a sum and I want to subtotal the amount fields and Excel will act just like Excel always does in terms of inserting those subtotals for me so now I can see 
subtotal line sales, so on and so forth, <coughs> including and excluding taxes. And that's the simplest kind of report we can generate from Sage Intelligence reporting. We'll take a look at a bit more complicated report in the next session. If we can help or you need more information on SAGE intelligence reporting, give us a call at the numbers on the screen. Thank you.